Uh, thank you very much. So I'm David Carney, and I'm a physician, and I work with the Veterans Administration, where I've worked for about 15 years. And about five years ago, I started a program uh, called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction at the Seattle Veterans Hospital. And I wanted to say a few words about our experience uh, in the hopes that perhaps this could serve as a model for other sites around the country. So why would we want to start such a, a program? Um, primarily because of the recognition that the consequences of serving in war endure for years, if not across the lifespan. That the stress that's experienced in combat or serving in the military extends for many years. We work with many Vietnam veterans who have had symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder for 40 years or more. And we wanted to do something about that. So the program that I'm going to describe in a little more detail describes one such way of working with that. We also know that having a serious medical illness, being in chronic pain or having another condition, is very stressful for a person, and that that has significant consequences across the lifespan. So with this understanding, we, we also recognize that stress can be worked with, that there are ways to work with stress, and we want to learn more about how we could teach such methods to veterans in the hopes that this could improve their quality of life, improve their family functioning, help them reintegrate back into society. So one such way of working with stress is through learning what is called mindfulness. So mindfulness is a term that is more commonly used in society. Uh, and I wanted to say a few words about our understanding of mindfulness in terms of how we understand it in modern psychology and how that can be applied. So fundamentally, mindfulness deals with attention. So mindfulness works from the perspective that we can't necessarily choose the experiences in our life that come our way, but we do have an ability to bring attention to those experiences in such a way that's healthy and is conducive to growth. So when I talk about working with attention in mindfulness teaching, a person will be taught a certain quality of attention and a certain flexibility of attention. So in terms of a quality of attention, that would be a curious, open, non-judging stance as com compared to a judging sort of critical quality of attention. Uh, and these habit patterns that many people have of sort of holding themselves to a certain standard and criticizing themselves if they don't meet that or uh, a self-critical coping style. These are areas that can be worked with in mindfulness and are conducive to uh, well-being. Uh, flexibility of attention refers to the ability to let go of patterns of thinking that are unhelpful. So in its most extreme form, rumination is one such style of thinking. So uh, it's very natural. Our attention is drawn to areas that we perceive a as being a problem, so the, a person's attention will stay with that, try to problem solve, stay with it, stay with it. And psychological studies have shown that our problem solving ability actually goes down by such patterns, that literally our focus of attention narrows greatly, and that in people with recurrent depression, that that's a major key factor in relapse of depression, that these cycles of rumination, because it can call up dark moods and thoughts that are very difficult for us to step out of. So there's evidence in scientific studies that teaching mindfulness skills helps people to avoid these relapses of depression. So fundamentally, mindfulness works with attention to bring a non-judgmental, open stance to present moment experience. And this is what we work with. The classes are structured as an eight-week ongoing course uh, series that asks a lot of participants. People are asked to do homework each day in, in the form of meditation practices. So one such way of learning mindfulness is through meditation practices, which are, which is a format for bringing attention uh, back to the present over and over again. So for example, for a person with post-traumatic stress disorder, it would likely be very difficult to walk into a room like this. So having your back to the door, being in an open space, having a natural tendency to categorize every person as a threat or a non-threat, that these tendencies spill over into life when a person returns home from a, a combat situation. So fundamentally, these, are, these contain aspects of attention that can be worked with, and that's what is worked with in mindfulness classes. 
So over the past five years, uh, we've offered a group-based course called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, which has been in the healthcare system for about 30 years. There's been very little work done with, with veterans in terms of this course, which is what I set out to do. We've had a, about 600 veterans participate in these courses, and these are very well received, very popular among veterans. So veterans work with a teacher who um, gives them homework assignments. They practice mindfulness exercises in class. People are given feedback and instruction about that. There's a structure and a workbook. And there's a growing body of scientific evidence that this makes a difference in a person's experience and their quality of life. There's even accruing evidence that uh, participation in an eight-week course like this changes brain structure and function in ways that are beneficial to a person. So essentially, we're teaching people not to block out or avoid their own experience, to show a certain respect and appreciation for their own experience, which is conducive to growth. So there is extensive information about this program available if, you're, if you were to do a web search. Uh, there are programs around the nation. There are a few within the Veterans Administration, and I hope that there are more in the future. Thank you very much.